Rural Fields here. How's it going? Jeez, I took the breath out of my, took the breath out of myself. If that's, I don't know, don't know what that means. Anyway, <laughs> I thought I'd uh, fire up a video for you. And, um, you know, we did a did a few Charlie Parker things there recently. I'm, I'm kind of thinking about keeping that going just because I like it and for no other reason. Um, if I if I looked at it as a, you know, was it a successful series of videos, uh, popularity wise, probably not. But I think it contributes to something on YouTube that's not there, as in people teaching Charlie Parker solos on, on guitar and good fingering. So, um, you know, if you didn't see that series, maybe check it out if you're interested in jazzy blues and uh, look out for uh, more of that stuff to come. So what we're going to do today here is um, linked to a, a little job I did for someone recently, which was writing five modules for a, a guitar education work uh, website. Uh, called Music Muse Academy. Now, basically what they do, it's kind of in its early stages, I think. I know they're hooking up with a lot of uh, YouTube kind of guitar players who are writing modules for them, but uh, mine seem to have, have kind of gone up there and, you know, check it out. It's music uh, musicmuse.academy. Um, if you just Google it and have a look around, I know there's a, a little demo video there and uh, it's worth kind of checking out. And what I did is I wrote five modules for them um, just to try. I think they just needed some more content to, to get the ball rolling on it and to start progressing the, uh, the website. But it's all the basic concept is flashcards. So they're basically flashing up a lick and then you repeat the lick and you learn via via repeating which is the classic form of of learning you know if you're learning trad music you're sitting in the corner of the pub and you're copying and you you know you do that for a couple of years next thing you know you're the guy singing the songs and there's another kid in the corner copying you so it's um so it's all built around that so i'm not going to say too much about that i'm actually just going to go through the 10 licks that i wrote so each module is just in a different key and it uses the same licks, different tempos and different grooves. And I focus on a different position. So I'm going through, um, you know, the five positions of the blues um, and I'm concentrating on string bending, you know, because that in the blues is really expressive form, probably the most expressive form that you can do on electric guitar. So this ba first batch of modules is about string bending, playing through different keys so you know which notes to bend in each position on the guitar. So so what, like I always say on all my videos, really is like what you're trying to do with your time when you're practicing is practice as many different elements uh, together as possible uh, because you just don't have time to work through that list of 25, 30 things you should be doing every day. You need to uh, find a teacher who will help you organize that time so you can hit a whole bunch of things all at once. So um, so let's go in and have a look, will we? I've got this... Um, uh, I've got the website open here and um, I might kind of take a few screenshots and flash it up. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play along with my own licks. Now, I did this a few weeks ago, so I can't really remember the licks. I wrote them, recorded them, send it off, off the information. And this is the first time I'm going back in. So essentially what I'm going to do now is relearn my own licks and, um, and maybe talk about them along the way. So it's kind of nice, I suppose, because we're on the same page, aren't we? You know, we're almost discovering it uh, together. Obviously, I'm going to be pretty familiar with them because as they crop up, I'm going to be, oh, yeah, it's that one. <laughs> OK, so um, so what are we focusing on? We're focusing on string bending playing through different keys, and there's five, the five positions of the blues scale. So uh, let's go in on the first one, will we? So here we go. So you can hear the lick is playing along with a little backing track, and then there's a gap. It's a two bar lick, flash card, and then it's two bars of a backing track, and what you have to do is play that lick back. Now, Kind of interesting as well because I played it on the Strat and now I'm playing it back on a Les Paul. And we're in the E 
form here, aren't we? Okay, so I'm going to stop that there. So you can hear that's the first lick. It's in the E form, in the key of E. Yeah, so you imagine, you know, uh, that's your E form in the key of E, and we're. And we're focusing on what are good notes to bend within each position. So, classic bending up to the root, classic bending up to the fifth, and then that, you know. Bend in that minor third. And that's a real Claptonism to end on the on that note within a within a lick. So you're ending on the fifth degree of the, the scale, if you like. So um I when I, I wrote little notes on each uh, lick, and this one seems very buddy guy like, you know. Let's play it one more time, will we? Okay, cool. Let's move on to the next one. So the next one's in the D form. So we're still in the key of E, but we're playing in this position here. So let's have a listen to this one. Let's listen to it a couple of times. I just need to check my tune in. So here we go. Squeezing the juice out of the note. So, you know, very simple. That's all pretty much on one string until the, the root at the end. You could, you know, it's only really three or four notes. Uh, and again, you're doing the classic bend up to the fifth, and then you've got that, you know, bending the minor third. So it's kind of nice that you get it on a loop. Um, now within the program, what you can do, um, if you go to Music Muse Academy and, and you know, um, watch the demo video and all that kind of stuff is you can save them and then you have the ability to slow it down and uh, just play along with the backing track and you can record yourself there's lots of different options on the um you know to uh, to check out let's go for the next one now this is in the c form so we're still we're still in the key of e so what's that one So what I'm doing here is I'm focusing on, you know, bending up to the root. And doing that minor third bend. So band bending up to the flat seven. So what you have to do is bend up three frets. And when, you know, they always sound epic, don't they? Those bends, when you do them in a solo. That's, you know, they're the things you need in your toolbox. Trying to get them perfectly in pitch as well is a challenge, isn't it?
Okay, let's check out the next one. So the next one's in the A form. So here's our E. There, so we're playing in this position. Again, what are we doing? We're, we're looking at good notes to string bend. Some, we're trying to learn something in each position of the, the cage posi position, if you like, of the blues scale. And at the moment we're in the key of E, but we, we might just do one other key as well. I, I did it in five keys. I did it in the, you know, the keys of C, A, G, E, and D. Again, keeping it narrow and deep in that we're, you know, focusing on guitar keys, really sharp keys, aren't we? Um, but, you know, if you were studying with me pr privately, I'd be forcing you to play in B flat and E flat and A flat and D flat and G flat. <laughs> okay, let's uh, listen to this one, which is in the A form. That vibrato at the top of a bend, just get to the note and then start slow and speed it up. I never decide whether to use my strap with the Les Paul. Okay, so you get the idea with that one. Let's check out the next one, the G form. Okay. I'm not going through all the notes on these, but if you go on the website and you, you look at the licks at the tab and, and everything, you'll see there's a, well with this one I said, this, this lick starts with a classic minor third bend. Every blues rock sh sh player should know. And what we're doing is we're bending from the fifth to the flat seven again. So we're on the 12th fret and we're gonna do that minor third bend. And I started the licks on different beats in the bar as well, because you have to get used to playing on different beats in the bar. If you play the same lick on a different beat or starting on the off beat as opposed to on the beat, the licks feel completely different. You know, that's a, one of the tricks that, you know, guys like Clapton and Charlie Parker and all that, they can get away with using similar uh, lines, but they feel differently because you're displacing them now. Let's check this one out anyway. <laughs> There's only one bend in it, but it's that big minor third bend. So that's in the G form. Okay, and now, okay, so we've done five licks and we've done, you know, what, a lick in each form. Now this lick here is mixing the E and the D form. So we're moving between forms a little bit now. Now the next one is going to mix the C and the A form, so we're going to move between these two forms. Because one of the most common questions I get is like, how do you get from one form to the other? So, you know, it makes sense to kind of write a few licks that demonstrate that. So 
very simple, but you're getting a bend in, because our focus is bending. And there's repetition in this one and... You know, repetition is king, isn't it? When in doubt, you know, play it again. If you're not using any repetition, it's going to be very hard for the, the audience, you know. Okay, now uh, we're going to mix the G the G form into the E form. So let's have a listen to this one. It's nice listening to the Strat and then the Les Paul, isn't it? a bit of Paul Kossoff style vibrato if you can. Okay, you get the idea. Now, uh, we've got two more licks to go. Uh, this one mixes the A form, the G form, and the E form. So, you know, that position there and then to the E form. So we're, now we're mixing three positions. Whoa, this looks tricky. Pretty straightforward, but it's, you know, getting it accurate. Last time, maybe. Okay, so really we were just doing, you know, a bend here and then a bend in this position and a bend in that position. Um, okay, so this is lick number 10. This is the last lick. So, um, okay, let's check it out. Now this, the first note starts on the offbeat of one, two, three, four. Mm. And I didn't get that right at all. <laughs> I'll try it again. Ah yeah. Could be better. Let's try and hopefully next time I'll get it. So you get the idea there. So they're the 10 licks. What I'm going to do quickly, right, before we... Uh, uh, let's just look at it. In So what I do is I do this five times. That was the key of E. And then when you, you do it all in the key of A, but it's a little bit faster. And it's a different groove. Then you do it in the key of D. But it's a little bit faster and a slightly different groove. Then you do it in the key of G. A little bit faster, slightly different groove, and then you do it in C. You got it, a little bit faster and a different groove. So let's go to the fastest one now. This is gonna, you're gonna see me under pressure. <laughs> let's have a look. So lick number one. Hang on. Whew. 
Missed it. I'll get it next time. Okay, let's have a look at the next lick. Here's lick number four, I think, is it? These are all the same licks. Just a different key, faster groove. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. This is in the G form. Uh, here we go, number six, I think. Woo! Weird jamming with yourself, isn't it? Okay, number seven. One more time. I mean, you, if you're playing along and picking these out by ear, you're doing well. Couple, last couple of licks. But yeah, these are tricky when you're on just on one string, aren't they? time. Okay, and the last one. I'll catch you next time. I'll get it in a minute. The loop kind of cuts off a little bit, doesn't it? And I suppose it has to in order to leave a blank thing for you. So, I'm going to stop that now. Okay. Woo! Uh, yeah, that's a good workout, you know what I mean? Because you're working on string bending, and if you're, you know, your blues, if you're working on your blues guitar chops, you know, these are kind of intermediate. That last one was intermediate. You could maybe call, when we were doing them in E, 
kind of like a beginner intermediate um, but you know that that's definitely kind of intermediate kind of blues guitar playing because it's fast there's a lot of string bending and I can feel it in my hand there you know it's um, it's definitely conditioning the strength and being able to get that bend up and then vibrato get to the note start slow and then get faster that's a good way to go because you're going to pitch things better you can't vibrato before you get to the note i see a lot of people doing that the bending and the vibrato in almost at the same time but you've got to get to that note and get on that vibrato get that kind of happening so um anyway something to check out i mean you could just use this video and have fun playing along with those licks what are you doing you're focusing on string bending you're focusing on playing the same licks through five different keys and you've got you're mixing the positions, the five different cage positions. Um, or you, you could go to uh, Music Muse Academy and you can kind of uh, get stuck into the, the material there. I think it's a really cool concept, the flashcard things, because you're building up a repertoire of licks. And it's kind of real world stuff. These are things that I would record and play and you know have no second thoughts about playing when I want to sound kind of blues rocky and... Um, you know, these bends are just going to absolutely, you know, be expressive, you know, in in, in that kind of Clapton-esque, Stevie Ray, uh, blues rocky kind of style, you know. Um, so having a, having a little system to kind of try and reinforce that. And it's one thing being able to do it in one key. But if you actually blast it through a whole bunch of different keys without moving on to new material too quickly, take that same information, blast it in C, A, G, E, and D, you know, and more keys if you have the, you know, somebody leaning on you like me, leaning on you going, come on, let's go into another key, let's go into the key of B flat, let's, <laughs> and you just become much stronger as a player. It's not about the amount of material you work through, it's better to take a small amount of information you know, really worthwhile stuff, like knowing which notes to string bend in which position and really blasting it through keys, then your, your confidence really goes up. So I hope you enjoyed that as a lesson. I suppose it's kind of a nice feeder into that website, which is very much in development and is something worth watching uh, because I think there's going to be quite a few YouTubers uh, putting up content uh, over the next few months and um, it was kind of a nice project for me to get involved with and you know I will be doing future modules for them as well some Clapton based things and Steve Ray Vaughan based things so uh, please check that out um, and please subscribe say hello all of that kind of stuff um, it's nice to be doing a few videos again and um, I'll see you on the next one keep it happening <laughs>